Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So with summer on its way, it's almost popsicle season. So I thought this week would be really fun to apply the watercolor textures that we used for typography the other week to popsicles because they're kind of watercolor anyway. So we will create uh, the different popsicles and then we'll apply the textures and I'll show you how to edit the textures without having to release any clipping mess in Illustrator, which is super helpful. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this one and then you can kind of, uh, once we do this one, you'll know how to make everything else. And then I will also do this one on the end since it's a little different of a shape and then we'll throw in the watercolor so we can make this a quick tip tutorial instead of a long winded one, which I'm sure will be better for everybody. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this one so we can um, see how to do it. I will give you the color builds that I'm using. So this light brown color, is 019 and the dark color is the exact same only it's 60 for black instead of 45 and then the pink if you want to use the pink it's 54200 okay so we're going to make the popsicle stick first and we can do that by grabbing our rounded rectangle tool and the most important thing here is to make sure you have the same corner radius as I do. And if I double click this, you can see my corner radius is set at 0.1667. So just make sure yours is set to that. And I'm just gonna freehand it. So I'm just gonna drag out a popsicle stick and I will make sure I eyedropper this brown so it's the right color. And then we're gonna use the re rounded rectangle tool once again to create the popsicle. So I'm just gonna once again freehand uh, a rectangle and I'm gonna align these two together. And I can do that by rubber band selecting them and then just clicking this horizontal align center icon up here. And let me just drag this popsicle stick down a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, we need to add this top uh, part right here and we can do that by grabbing our ellipse tool. And I'm just gonna set my crosshairs right on this left side. And then I'm gonna hold shift so I get a circle when I do it. And I'm gonna drag until my crosshairs hit the other side of the rectangle, and then I'm gonna release. Then I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard, which activates my selection tool, and I'm gonna drag it upward, and as I'm doing that, I'm gonna hold shift so it stays straight. And as soon as the edges of the circle hit the top edges of the rectangle, I'm gonna release. I'm gonna hold shift and select the bottom part of the popsicle, and then I'm gonna come over to my Pathfinder palette, and I'm just going to hit this Unite icon, and if you don't see your Pathfinder palette, you can get to it by going Window Pathfinder. So I'm just going to click Unite, and now I've got my Popsicle, but it needs to look prettier than that. So I'm going to grab the pink, and then we need to come in here and add that nice little shadow at the bottom. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to activate my pen tool. I'm just going to click here. I'm going to click over here, and then anywhere you want, we're just making a triangle and then close it off. And we need to make this the darker brown color, so I'm gonna eyedropper that. And now, just like that, we've got a really quick popsicle. And if you wanted to add these two lines here like I have, you can do it by grabbing your popsicle stick. So I'm just gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag, and then I'm gonna click and drag another one. And as I'm doing that, I'm gonna hold Shift so they stay straight. And then I'm gonna scale them down. So with both of them selected, I'm holding Shift and that just scales them proportionally. And then I'm gonna bring them over here on top of my popsicle. And if they're not on top of the pink for you, like they aren't for me, all you have to do is right click, arrange, bring to front. And now as you can see, they need to be just a little darker of a pink than what I have. So I'm gonna eyedropper the pink to change them the same pink color. And then I'm gonna come over here to my color palette and just increase the black percentage by 5%. And that looks good. So you basically do the exact same thing for a skinnier one. You just start with a skinnier rectangle. And for a wider one, you just start with a wider rectangle. And then for this one, let me just duplicate this one so we can use the same thing as an example. I'm gonna get rid of these lines for this one. And as you can see, it kind of fans out at the bottom. And you can do that by grabbing your direct select tool and you can do that by hitting A on your keyboard. That's the shortcut. And the direct select tool basically means you can um, edit the points individually as part of a shape instead of the, moving the whole shape on its own. So if I rubber band select just this corner, I can select just these two individual points and I can move them just by hitting the right arrow key on my keyboard. Six, seven, eight. And just make sure you remember how many times you hit it because you want it to be even on both sides. So I hit it eight times. So I'm just gonna rubber band select these two and then I'm gonna hit my left arrow key. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and that looks good. And if you want to get this two-tone color like I have, all you have to do is grab your ellipse tool once again, and you can just drag out a really, really wide ellipse, and then just position it centered over the rest of it. Grab the bottom um, portion of the popsicle and hold shift to select both of them. And then come over here to your Pathfinder palette once again and hit the divide icon. And when you divide, when you use the Pathfinder at all, it automatically groups things together, which doesn't really make sense because we're dividing. Um, but anyway, we have to ungroup them and you can do that by hitting Command Shift G on a Mac or Control Shift G on a PC. And then you can just select this outer part and you can delete it right away. And it doesn't really look like we have two pieces here, but we do. Uh, so if I click this top part and just eyedropper this orange, now we have a dual color popsicle. And if you want to add drips, all you have to do is grab this top part, just select it, hit N on your keyboard, and that'll get your pencil tool activated. And then I'm just going to freehand this with my mouse. So I'm just going to click on this line and then draw some drips. All right. That's a bad drip. I'm going to redraw my drip. That's a better drip. All right. So see, whenever you divide things, now we've got a little bit of a space here. And if that happens for you, not a big deal. I'm just going to select this top part again, hit my N key. And this time, I'm just going to come a little further over. All right. That's better. OK, so this last one, since it's kind of a weird shape, I'll walk you through that. So I'm just going to grab this one once again, and we're going to pretend that it was made way skinnier than it was. I'm just going to shrink it a little bit. OK, but obviously I would remake it um, because this top part is really big. Let me bring this top part down. I'm just holding, um, I'm grabbing my direct select tool dragging over and then um, kind of bringing it down a little bit. So I'm grabbing points individually. Okay. All right, so for this one, you can see we've got kind of a weird shape up on the top and we can replicate this by just grabbing our rounded rectangle tool again and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna freehand a shape and that looks good. So I'm just gonna, you can see my smart guys are telling me where the center point is. And once I got there, I released. Then I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard, click. So both of them are selected and then I'm gonna unite them. And now if I zoom in here, I need to get rid of these two points. So I'm gonna hit the hyphen key on my keyboard and that'll give me my delete anchor point tool. I'm just gonna click both of those points to get rid of them. So now I have, if I hit A on my keyboard and that grabs my direct select tool again, and if I select just this one, you can see it's got a top handle, but I need a bottom handle so I can make this a softer curve. So I can add a handle by hitting Shift C on my keyboard. And if I click and drag, I'm gonna stop once the top part looks good because if I go, if I make the bottom part look good, the top part gets super funky really fast. So I'm just gonna go until my top part looks the same, but I have this bottom handle. And then I'm gonna release. I'm gonna do the same thing for this point. And release once I have a bottom handle. Now I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard. And now I can just drag this bottom handle without making the top one crazy like it was before. And if I hold shift on my keyboard, that'll keep my handle straight. You can see how they straighten up. So I'm just gonna drag it a little bit. It doesn't need to be severe. It just needs to be soft enough to give the impression the right impression. Okay, so there's our basic shape and now we need to add the different colors. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before with the ellipse tool. Grab the ellipse tool, drag out a super wide ellipse, position it on top of it, hold shift to select, actually let me align that a little better. Okay, hold shift to select the bottom part, divide, ungroup, command shift G or control shift G, select the top part that you don't want, delete it, and now we can recolor this so we can keep things straight. Okay, so now we need to grab another ellipse because we need this bottom part cut up. So make it really wide, position it on top, hit shift, actually let me lower it a little. Hold shift to select the bottom part, click the divide button, Command Shift G or Control Shift G to ungroup, select the part you want to get rid of, delete. And now I'm going to recolor this white, but I'm going to add a little bit of black in it, like 3%, just so you can see it on a, a white background, which is what this is over here. 
Okay, so and then the bottom part I need to color blue. And we need these lines again, which is the same exact thing we did before, only this time we're going to add a little bit of transparency to it. So I'm going to do 15% black, 0 for magenta and yellow, and then 5% cyan. But then I'm going to come over here to my transparency palette, and if you don't see this, you can get to Figoing Window Transparency. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply, and then I'm going to reduce the opacity to 40%. And now that looks really nice. Okay, so now we're gonna have some fun with watercolor. So these watercolors are part of that texture kit for the topography um, tutorial. So if you picked up that kit, these are exact, the exact same ones that were in that kit, so you can reuse them. Um, if not, I do have a couple of free ones on my blog and I will leave the link in the video description. So make sure you click on that and check it out. Okay. So we're just going to apply this watercolor first and then I'll show you how to do this dual tone right here. So I'm just going to make a copy. I'm going to hold Alt, hold Shift to keep it straight. And now we're going to bring in that watercolor. So I'm going to go File, Place, and choose the watercolor, which is number four for the abstract textures. I'm going to place it, and because this is a, a big texture, so you can use it on a lot of things, we can we have to scale it down. So I'm going to hold Shift and grab the corner node, click and drag to scale it down. And now I need to see where it's falling on my popsicle. In order to do that, I need to send it to the back. So you can right click, arrange, send to back. And now you can kind of see where the orange is lining up and where the green is lining up. And I can scale it down even more if I want. And then when I'm happy, I need to lock it into the shape, and I can do that by holding Shift, clicking on the shape, right-clicking, and choosing Make Clipping Mask. And that looks really good, but I need to get rid of these. Um, I need to change these lines again. So I'm just going to grab the same settings as these. If I eyedropper it, it takes on the exact same settings, blending mode and all. Okay. So say I want more green, instead of having to release the clipping mask, reposition it, and then remake the clipping mask, you can do it all within the clipping mask. And that sounds confusing, but I'll show you what it means really quick. So all you have to do is hit A on your keyboard, click on the texture, which selects it, and now I can actually just drag it around. And if I need to scale it up or scale it down a little more, all I have to do is hit V afterwards. You need to hit A first before you hit V. Um, and then you can grab a node, hold shift, and you can scale it down, and then you can still drag it around. So that's pretty nice, figuring out what you want pretty easily. Okay, so let's add some texture to this one. This one's different because we've got the two textures going on. I'm actually using the same texture, but I'm repositioning it so it kind of looks like two textures, but it keeps the overall tone so it's really consistent. So I'm going to bring in this texture. So I'm going to go File, Place once again. And I believe I use this texture for this one, so number eight. I'm going to hit Place, and once again I need to scale it down, so I need to zoom out. Hold Shift while you scale to keep things proportional. I'm going to zoom back in. I'm going to send this to the back, so right click, arrange, send it back. And now I can kind of position it where I want it. And then I'm going to select the orange, so I'm going to hold Shift, select the orange, right click, make clipping mask. And now you can see, um, so this example over here, I kind of have the a, a smoother fade than I have right now. So if I hit A on my keyboard, click, and now I can drag. So I'll find kind of a smoother transition. Actually, I I want to make this a little bit bigger, so I'm going to hit V on my keyboard, hold Shift, and then I can scale it up, and that's a much smoother transition now. Okay, so now I need to add the bottom part, and I can do that by doing the same thing I did before. File, Place, bring in that texture, number 8, Place, then I need to scale it down, hold Shift while you scale, drag it over, send it to the back, right click, arrange, send it back. Kind of position it where you'd like it. I've got a little more red in the bottom on this one. Hold shift, click the bottom part, right click, make clipping mask. And now you can see you can't really tell that there's a transition happening, so I need to make sure that this ends up a little darker than it already is. So if I hit A and I select this bottom part, make sure you don't select the top part by accident. And then you can move it around. So, let's see. I actually think I need to move the top part around, so if I just click anywhere, I can click on the top part and kind of bring it down. And now you can see I'm getting that nice orange. There's a nice little contrast. 
happening. There we go. So that's how you can apply watercolor textures to popsicles in Illustrator, and you can also make them all yourself really, really quickly too. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new tutorial every single week. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.